welcome everyone to this event. Um, I am delighted to have so many people attending. I would like to acknowledge the support of all the partners involved in this project. And um, I will not go into detail in the program. You all have the program in front of you. And I will hand over to Helena, uh, first of all, to uh, provide context and then to Mariana to present the work before we move on to Brian and the panel. So over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for uh, giving me this honor to open this or giving this context for Open Forum for Challenges of Sharing Data Linked to Publications. Um, I am Helena Larkson. I come from the Finnish Social Science Data Archives. Archives, sorry. I'm the director of FSD, and currently I'm also uh, chair of SESTA uh, GA. I'm also happy that there are so many participants. We, we didn't anticipate this, this in the beginning when we were planning. So welcome everybody. Again, um, the contents of this. Uh, a very brief uh, presentation are as such. I will tell you what SESTA is briefly and then about journals outreach, what our purpose is and present the team shortly. And uh, then of course, the purpose of this open forum, why we are gathered here today or uh, around Europe, I think, but to our computers. So, Sesta Eric, um, you will see from the first bullet point while we uh, talk only about Sesta Eric and mostly Sesta and not use the whole name. It's quite a long one. So, Sesta is a consortium of European Social Science Data Archives, and Eric is a special legal identity uh, which is um, created for research infrastructures in. in you're on the European level, so it's European Research Infrastructure Consortium. SESTA ERIC. Uh, SESTA has been ERIC since 2017, and before that, since 2013, it uh, was a company and, uh, under Norwegian law, but um, actually it was uh, functioning quite like an ERIC. I mean, all the services were being built and so on. Um, uh, SESTA existed as a Council of European Social Science Data Archives earlier, so it, it was a loose cooperation between data archives that started in the 1970s. Uh, in the current consortium, countries are members and they appoint a service provider in, in their country. Uh, SESTA is a distributed infrastructure, which means that the service providers are the contact point to national research community. They provide data ingest, curation, download facility, and info information services about their services and data and about SESTA services also. The, uh, then there is main office in Bergen, Norway, and with the main office, uh, service providers cooperate in building central services and providing services internationally. Uh, so here you see the members list and the uh, map is, I think, from year 2019, so the map is not up to date, but the list of members should be. There are, uh, sorry, <clears throat> Uh, 23 members since Italy was accepted a member yesterday in the GA meeting. So we welcome Italy to this. Sesta family. <clears throat> Sorry about my voice. Then Sesta has had time to build uh, uh, tools and services, and there are quite a lot of them. Actually, if you go and look at the homepage, I have here just some of them. Uh, SESTA data catalog is, uh, is uh, the largest social science data catalog, uh, which collects um, or harvests 
uh, data descriptions from the uh, member countries' data catalogs. So when you go to SESTA data catalog, you can search for data and you might find data from several countries when you use the, uh, the search term. And then when you go to the data description, then you can uh, you will be directed to download the data from the member countries or the service providers data catalog. So uh, data holding are in the member countries, not by system. Uh, SESTA also have, has uh, vocabulary services and uh, they are important in actually making data findable and uh, interoperable. In, of course, there are many other reasons or, or ways to do that, but uh, vocabularies are important in, in this work. And, and um, ELST is a multinational thesaurus, which has also been built earlier. It, it, Roots are far be before the SESTA ERIC, actually. Uh, SESTA training is um, uh, uh, it's something that uh, SESTA has um, invested quite much, and actually, uh, also journals outreach is now part of SESTA training, even though uh, we may uh, or we do more than training, I think, but under the uh, work the schedule now, we are part of training. Okay, and then to the journals outreach team, as uh, already mentioned in the opening talk, um, there are nine uh, partners in this and many more people than just nine. Um, this team has uh, worked to for this um, open forum also. So we are a journalist outreach team, but we are also a team for this, this event today. Then what is the purpose of journalist outreach? Uh, we aim to create a dialogue between academic publishers, journal editors, and uh, sister partners. And uh, the issues are about good practice related to data sharing and preservation. There are many ways to these goals, and one of them is organizing events such as this one today. Uh, we also develop pilot case studies and publish examples of good practice and act as the distributed hub of communication between academic publishers, journal editors, and SESTA, SESTA partners. And open forums purpose then. Um, first of all, uh, we present also findings from the journal's outreach, outreach activities, which was in SESTA work plan last year. Uh, then uh, we, of course, in as it's an open forum, uh, it's for opening a dialogue between publishers, editors, researchers, and Cessna partners. And then the aim is, of course, discuss challenges of data sharing, as in the title already mentioned. And the panel will highlight good practices and possible forms of collaboration. Also, of course, in other discussions, but the, we have a quite wide panel here and many stakeholders are taking part, which is very nice to know that this is our uh, common course now. Um, so, uh, shortly, we, the team, welcome a lively debate about all aspects of sharing data related to publications. Welcome everybody and thank you for listening to my presentation. Perfect timing. Yeah. Um, we will only take questions uh, through the chat or uh, to address them in the end. So we're moving on to Mariana uh, for the next presentation. Uh, hello to everyone. I hope you can see my presentation on the screen. 
So my name is uh, Mariana Glavica. I come from Croatian Social Science Data Archive, which is a Croatian service provider for CESDA. I will try to give you an overview of what we have done last year uh, during this journal outreach activities. Of course, I will not be able to give a uh, comprehensive overview, so I will focus just on some uh, highlights uh, and uh, also on some future perspectives. So, uh, let me start with, uh, with the goals that we had last year. Uh, so, we wanted to better understand journal practices, requirements and needs regarding the availability of data used in scientific publications. We also wanted to assess says, the service providers, which are actually uh, social science data archives, and Helena did explain that. So, we wanted to assess uh, capacities, policies and already existing services uh, for responding to the needs of journals regarding preservation of data and replication material. And also we were interested in exploring uh, models on uh, how CESDA could coordinate uh, these uh, services uh, that we can offer to journals. Uh, in order to reach our goals, uh, we first analyzed uh, global publishers' data sharing policies, so big publishers. We selected three of them. We also conducted interviews with social science journal editors. We had seven selected journals publishing with different contexts. Uh, and then we conducted a survey uh, of uh, says the service providers, data archives, and also a focus group with representative with some representatives of service serv uh, uh, says the service providers. Uh, last year in this project, partners were Gezis from Germany, Force from Switzerland, ADP from Slovenia, Targi from, from Hungary, and Krozda from Croatia. So first, journals landscape and the perspective of global publishers who already uh, have data sharing policies in place, but they are also uh, continuously in a state of uh, innovation. So we see the, 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 the opportunity for collaboration here. Uh, what we saw by uh, exploring these policies, uh, that uh, they are uh, sometimes specific and uh, that some deviations can exist from the general frameworks for developing research data policies, uh, such as one recently developed by uh, Research Data Alliance, for instance. Why is this important? Because uh, when uh, when you have specific policies for uh, for each publisher, then that can be confusing and hard to implement by individual journals who are published by that publishers, and also sometimes hard to follow by authors. Uh, from the perspective of social sciences, we were also uh, we were of course focused on uh, issues that interest uh, that are of interest of to social sciences, uh, and so one of the elements uh, which is uh, highly recommended in for instance instance, in, in, in this general framework and uh, in, in other recommendations also, uh, that uh, publishers recommend discipline-specific repositories uh, to authors to as a depositing spaces, but we didn't find this uh, in at least in uh, not uh, not in all of these uh, three uh, journals that we analyzed, uh, and also uh, there were no explicit ex explicit recommendations for the specifics and sensitivity of social science data. Here we have qualitative data, we have specific set of metadata, uh, contextual information is very important if you want to understand data, and also very important issues uh, around uh, data protections, and these are all known ethical and legal uh, issues. This is important because uh, for social scientists, uh, I think that's not very motivating to share data because uh, 
every publisher and every journal uh, is actually allowing authors not to share data because of the ethical and legal limitations. Uh, so uh, we have to be aware that this is still uh, that this uh, ethical and legal limitations uh, can be uh, overcome and uh, this data can still be shared. Um, so we also noticed uh, that another thing that we noticed that some publishers al uh, are uh, also expanding their services. So they are developing uh, data deposit platforms. Uh, they are creating new journals uh, that focus on specific aspects of the research cycle. So authors can, for instance, uh, publish brief uh, uh, data articles or articles about data, about methods and protocols, software, uh, etc. Uh, so, uh, another perspective in uh, this journal's landscape is the perspective of uh, journal editors. Uh, as I said, we had uh, seven interviews, so it, it's not a really a representative uh, a sample, but I think we, we covered uh, uh, different uh, disciplines in uh, different fields in social sciences uh, and also different modes of uh, uh, publishing. Uh, and the uh, common perception is that uh, data sharing uh, uh, is inevitable and also very welcome uh, for, for all science, sciences and for also for, so, for social sciences. But uh, uh, they stressed out that uh, there are complexities associated with the diversity of social science data and uh, additional demands uh, such data can impose on sharing and replicability. Uh, also, we could hear some conflicting views on, uh, for instance, qualitative data. Uh, and there was a question if uh, qualitative uh, research, research can, can be replicable because of these different approaches that you can have with qualitative research. And of course, uh, concerns, we, we could hear concerns uh, about these uh, challenges in re relation to confidentiality uh, uh, of participants uh, that were in, uh, uh, of, partici of research participants. Uh, so, in our sample, we also had uh, a few uh, independently published journals and uh, they actually innovate at a slower pace compared to journals published with global publishers and the reason is very clear, they lack the financial and technical resources. Uh, so we had the opportunity to uh, to talk about possible solutions for that. And uh, so uh, we agreed that uh, implementing these data sharing policies uh, could be done in collaboration with national data archives. Uh, and also some of these journals uh, already made some steps in this direction. Uh, also, we could hear some expectations from national data archives, which are says the service providers. Uh, so, support in infrastructure, technical support, support in research data management training for researchers or for authors, of course, uh, development of metadata specific to social science data, uh, understanding of policies on data protection, uh, uh, which includes uh, also uh, where to store the data, so storage issue and uh, how data can be shared uh, at the national and European uh, levels, levels or across the borders. So the next uh, uh, length, landscape we tried to explore was the, says the service providers themselves. Uh, so, uh, as I said, we wanted to assess the capacities of service providers to, uh, to accept uh, uh, data linked to publications. And uh, we could see that a uh, majority of service providers can accept uh, data and associated material related to journal articles, uh, but some of those who can, uh, who uh, can accept still don't have any such data. So, so the service providers uh, didn't get yet any, any data, but they are willing to, to, to do this kind of service. Uh, 
on the other hand, some service providers are already working with journals, uh, and that can be by archiving of journal hold data holdings, uh, or by supporting journals with instructions for authors in citing data and uh, giving recommendations to deposit data with trusted domain-specific repositories. Uh, also, we had one uh, service provider who is serving as a backup archive for Mendeley data. Uh, and also some uh, service providers are already listed as recommended repositories uh, by uh, journals and journals pub publishers. What is important in this context is also that uh, most service providers are represented in repository registries such as fair sharing and read three data. This is important because some publishers are recommending these registries to authors to search for appropriate uh, repository. So uh, these uh, here in, the, in this part, uh, I wanted to show you the results from our survey. Uh, and I hope you see if I would uh, if I had a slide in a, in a room uh, in a live event, then you wouldn't see this. But now you probably can see this on your uh, screens. So these are uh, results from a survey with service says the service providers uh, about uh, services that might be relevant to uh, journal requirements. And what we can see here that. Um, we had uh, we had 19 service providers responding to this uh, survey so what we can see uh, that uh, most of service providers are able to provide long ter term curation and preservation they are uh, they are uh, all of them are doing uh, quality control, which is control of data consistency, uh, check on anonymization, documentation, completeness, etc. Uh, they can also offer personalized expert curation support for data and metadata preparation. Uh, not all of them uh, can offer links to publications, but this is easier to implement. Uh, and uh, uh, they offer standard licenses, which can be important. Uh, they can offer training, advice, uh, active support for data management planning, and they also promote uh, data usage. Of course, not everything is uh, perfect. Uh, you can always uh, improve. Uh, but first, uh, you have to ask this question or, uh, about which of these services, uh, services are actually the most important. And if we ask service providers, then they are basically ranking highly those services that they already offer. Uh, but I hope that through this, uh, through this forum, uh, we could uh, see other perspectives also and uh, think about which services are uh, more important than, uh, than others. Uh, so, uh, in the, this context of uh, developing services and uh, uh, and this constatation that uh, there is always space for improvement for everybody, uh, we have to notice that uh, expectations from data repositories uh, are gradually moving further in terms of what is expected. Uh, and uh, here, uh, I put I, I did put a link uh, on one uh, recent invitation to a dialogue, and uh, I think that uh, all uh, stakeholders who are present here, so be it uh, journal publishers, editors, representatives from data archives, researchers, I think we have some librarians also. Uh, I think we should all, and we are all invited to participate in this dialogue of uh, what is actually important for uh, data repositories, because this is this is one very hot issue now, and what we want to achieve is to have a very uh, to have quality services. Uh, so for that, we need to develop uh, a reasonable criteria, uh, and then we have we have some aims to to, to follow so for, for uh, so concretely says the service providers then can aim to implement this this criteria but but first we have to see which criteria are really important 
So I invite you basically all to 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 look uh, to this uh, document uh, uh, later and to be part of this uh, dialogue. Um, so, what can be benefits of cooperation between journals and uh, CESDA service providers? Uh, pulling from what we already heard. Uh, uh, so, developing sound data policies for social sciences which authors can understand and follow. That can be one benefit. And when we speak about benefits, we can ask for, uh, benefits for whom? And I think here we are basically speaking about benefits for uh, for authors or researchers, although they, that may be benefits for uh, journal editors and journal publishers, but the, uh, at the at the latest end, uh, we have uh, authors who, who who we want uh, to support. Uh, so uh, we can offer often free and reliable data repository service, which can be trusted. Uh, Time can be reduced when responding to authors about data sharing practices and policies. Free advice and training covering all aspects of research data management. Uh, data quality and integrity assessment following established standards in social sciences, possibly avoiding the need of such assessment as a part of peer review process. We can cover legal and ethical issues, uh, resolve them, uh, it, they can be resolved by data archive ac experts and the, 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 the goal is to have more data sets uh, shared uh, if researchers can receive support from domain uh, data experts. So, uh, for the end, what is the role of CESDA uh, and uh, CESDA Agenda 2020, which we are conducting now, basically in coordinating activities, uh, uh, in, in promoting uh, of already available services for journals offered by service providers, uh, and also uh, uh, by addressing capacities, uh, 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 capacity challenges of service providers, because we saw that not all service providers are developed enough. Uh, so we want to achieve that. Uh, and CESDA Agenda is basically an instrument for achieving strategic goals of CESDA and it enables CESDA service providers to work together. Uh, so journals outreach again is on the Agenda 21-22 uh, uh, table or task is one of, one of the tasks of Agenda 21-22 and it enables us to work uh, on unifying, improving and coordinating activities related to developing services to journals and Helena already said uh, some other goals of this uh, effort. Uh, here is the link to web and the mailing list is already available. Seraphim will be advertised it now or later uh, that this will be uh, available very soon. And that's all for me. Thank you for listening.